All right, man. So we is back into the YouTube video. We is about to start our 50 minutes of free game. So jumping straight into it, I chose the first topic because I feel like this topic kind of means something to me and a lot of people overlook this. So like y'all talk a lot about making money, but don't understand that if your mental health ain't straight, you can't make money, bro. It's hard to make money when your brain is cluttered, bro. I used to be that person trying to chase a bag 24-7, not even understanding that if mentally, if I wasn't all the way together, bro, the money was never going to fall into my lap because my brain had so much stuff going on at the time, whether it be personal issues, family issues, or whatever the case may be, bro. Until you deal with what you got going on mentally, you'll never be able to focus on chasing money, bro. And you shouldn't chase money, bro. Mind you. Money is never just going to drop out of a tree and fall into your lap. But chasing money, bro, chasing it is not the objective neither, bro. What you want to do is create a situation where you and money have a mutual relationship. And what I mean by that is, is like, bro, money has a respect for you and you have a respect for money. But don't let it be a situation where you chasing the bag, bro. It's nothing to be chased. I tell folks all the time, it's not a race. It is a marathon. It's about who keep it the longest, not who get it the quickest, bro. It's a person right now that's going to have money that won't have money tomorrow. It is a person right now that is broke tomorrow that will have money tomorrow. But the reason why is because you have to have that mental setup to know, bro, like money, money don't make or break you. Money does nothing but amplify what you have going on. So say you was a person that was slimy. You get money, you're going to be even grimier. If you're a giver, when you have money, you're going to have more to give. So you're going to give more. But I want y'all folks to understand, bro, that whatever you have going on is going to amplify your situation, bro. So until you is like confident within yourself, you got all of your shit together, money can't do nothing for you, bro. Remember that. Moving forward, uh, being able to provide for yourself before you're able to provide for others, bro. I feel like this is a strong topic because when I was younger, bro, I used to stress myself out trying to figure out how I was going to provide for my family at such a young age, not even realizing that like, bro... I was stressing myself out for nothing because a lot of the stuff that I was doing, bro, how can I provide for somebody else when I can't even dress myself, clothe myself, put myself in a crib? So until you in a financial position to take care of yourself, don't stress yourself out about trying to keep your family straight, trying to keep your folks straight, trying to make sure everybody around you is straight. Because at the end of the day, if you're giving everybody everything you got to give. You're going to drain yourself, bro, and at the end of the day, you're going to leave yourself in a hole, bro. So put yourself in a position where you could do something before for yourself before you could do for others, bro. Like, come on now. If a teacher ain't went to school and, and learned her damn self, how is she going to sit in the classroom and try to teach y'all? You have to do for yourself before you could do for others, bro. And then we're going to move forward. Uh, I, get, I get questions like this all the time, bro. People ask me. They say... I lose people in my life 24-7, whether it be females or males. And I tell people, bro, relationships become beneficial at certain times. So understand that the person that you're cool with right now, you, you, might not, you might not be cool with that person in the near future. But that don't mean it is any love lost because what I tell y'all is, bro, in certain situations, bro, people present themselves to you at the time because that's what the universe wanted for you. I have a female that I met a year ago. No love lost. If we ever started talking again, it'd be cool. But I know that won't happen. But the reason why I stood up like that is because at the time in my life, when I was trying to like put together what I really need to put together and do what I need to do, bro. It was a lot of distractions I had around me that wasn't allowing me to get to that next level. And that female gave me a level-headed mind. You know what I'm saying? So whether it came to me trying to figure out, like, financially what I need to do, she was my backbone at the time. You know what I'm saying? I might have needed that crutch. But that don't mean that 24-7, I, I was going to need her all the way throughout my life because that makes a person dependent. So I had to understand that, like, in certain situations, bro, you get what you get in the time for a reason bro like everybody ain't meant to be with you for long periods or everybody ain't meant to be with you from here until you reach your end goal because what i come to understand is bro a lot of people can't go on that journey with you bro i be looking back and i say damn i had a thousand partners around me and now i have no partners at all but you want to know why i never be mad about the situation because i look at it and i be like certain rooms that i'm about to enter certain places that you going people wasn't gonna be able to come with you bro so i just come to realize bro People, people will sit and, and just stay in the moment trying to figure out why certain people are dropping off like flies around them and falling out of their lifestyle. It's because certain places you're going, people ain't meant to go with you. Now, mind you, say say you got a situation where, uh, I, I don't know, bro. It, it's different for everybody, bro. So say you got a situation to where basically like 
you you trying to get your yourself all the way together, bro. But you got a person around you right now that was benefiting you in the past, but he's holding you back now. That's what I mean by people ain't meant to be around you through certain situations that you go through. I could recall a time when I had a partner around me that was motivating me when I was at my lowest and kicking in the hood. But that moment that I got to that next level and I was trying to progress myself out of the streets, he was the same partner that was holding on to my ankle and didn't want me to go to the next level. And it's not to say that there was no love lost, bro. It's just certain people don't grow and certain people do and certain people grow at other times. So if you elevate past your partner, bro, it's no love lost, bro. It just means that at the end of the day, bro, in that given moment, he was there for that moment, bro. Don't feel no type of way about that shit. Same thing with females, bro. It, it's it's the same thing, bro. Don't feel no type of way about losing females, losing partners, whatever the case may be. Because like I said, bro, a lot of people that surround you right now, it's just for the moment, bro. And, and it's either a lesson, a blessing, or something of that shape, form, or nature. But I always tell people, bro, don't look at it for the negative. I used to sit in my life and be like, damn, bro. I would ponder on the negative things and be like, why is my life so trashy? Not even realizing, brother, if you just take a second to realize that your biggest issue is another person's dream life, you'll, you'll really stop sitting there and, and just sitting in the moment for forever, just letting, letting life kick your ass for real. Because what I tell y'all folks is, I think about it all the time. I used to have a, a situation where I'd be like, damn, my life sucks. There is somebody DMing me right now saying they want to live my lifestyle. So your sucky ass lifestyle is another nigga's dream goal. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, bro, don't ever feel like what you got going on. Don't ever feel like what you got going on is, is the worst, bro. It could always be, be worse than your situation, bro. There is a homeless person on the street that's mad about having a blanket in the cover, sleeping under a church, but there is a person that's sleeping in a cardboard box that wish he had the shelter. So it just be like in certain situations, just look at it and be thankful for what you do have and don't think about what you don't have. Because what you don't have, you could gain. What you do have, you could lose. Appreciate what you have, bro. I always tell people, appreciate what you have. People will try to tell me all the time, you're not humble, you don't know how to be humble, this, that, and the third. I'm one of the most humble people in the world, but I come to find out that when you're humble, people shit on you. So you have to learn how to give an even differentiation between the two. Like, I could be humble, but I could still show people, like, y'all not going to step on my toes and just make me feel like I'm less than anybody. Because it seems like the moment that you let people feel like you a regular ass motherfucker, people try to goddamn, like, like, I'm talking about walk on you for real. So I come to find out, bro, it has to be even differentiation. To the people that treat me nicely, I'm going to be humble. And to the people that try to shit on me, I'm going to make sure I got them show you, nigga, this, I got Charmin tissue we could wipe you you feel me so y'all folks just like don't let nobody step on your toes bro um i be telling people too bro live to please yourself i feel like in today's society bro i said this in my last free game video i might say it in damn near every free game video because it's a new viewer watching learn to please yourself bro it be people out here 24 7 not even realizing that when you go into that grave bro and you get laid down in a casket it will be 20 to tw it will be 10 to 20 30 40 50 people that's gonna show up to your funeral out of the thousands of people that you know so what are you spending all this time trying to impress all these people for and trying to live for all of these other people it is a person going to college right now that don't want to go to college he's gonna graduate and have student debt he went to college for his grandparents when in reality he wanted to do music. He's going to live his life miserable because he wanted to do what somebody else wanted to do. And that's weird, bro. I tell people all the time, bro, focus on yourself. Do things that benefit you. Because at the end of the day, bro, when you're living to benefit another person, bro, you're never going to be happy, bro. You can satisfy your folks by doing what you want to do. I, my folks used to tell me, I want you to go to college. I, tr I tried college, bro. It's not to say I was dumb. I was good in school. It just wasn't what I wanted to do. I had graduated high school and was tired of high school. So jumping into college wasn't going to do nothing but set me up for failure if it wasn't what I wanted to do. But as I got there and progressed through life, I tried different things. Okay, I tried real estate. I tried working at Zaxby's. I tried every type of job you could think of. And I finally hit rock bottom and decided I wanted to work for myself. But who would have knew that my folks would have supported me when they start seeing it work out for you? So with that being said, bro... Just because they're not supporting you right now, they'll support you later, bro. Figure out your purpose. Do what you want to do. And when you reach your end goal, people are not going to appreciate you or act like they support you until they see the benefits of what your dreams was. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. If you're a rapper right now, you're making raps inside the studio every night. Until you get that one hit song, folks, them folks going to... They not going to act like they were supporting you. But as soon as you hit the BET Awards, your family going to be there. So with that being said, bro, think about yourself because they thinking about themselves. You know what I'm saying? Your parents want you to go to college to have the image to tell their friends, my son is a college grad, da, 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 da. So everything has its own ulterior motive. So with that being said, work for yourself.
Come on, huh? I always been the type of person to do what I want to do. I ain't going to do what nobody else tell me to do because that's corny. So we're going to read some of the topics y'all folks commented. Um, he say, uh, man, say starting the LLC. I be telling folks all the time starting the LLC just be important for the simple fact that like as a regular person in, in like today's society, bro, you're not really respected. You know what I'm saying? So like I walk into a bank right now and try to get a loan in my name. I might get declined versus you going there with your business bank account, with your business ID, LLC, business entity, whatever you want to call it. They respect you inside of these credit bureaus. These these loan agencies respect you more. The people that have money respect you more when you're considered a business. No one cares about me. But who cares for LLC? When that pops up and they see my credit checks and they see all the money that's went through my business, it just means more, bro. LLCs are important, bro. And then he said LLC versus S Corps and C Corps. I tell people all the time, bro, like uh, S Corp is a sole proprietorship. You know what I'm saying? So I tell people uh, like when it comes to like sole proprietorships and like corporations and stuff like that, bro. Hey, I tell people all the time, bro, like if you're a sole proprietor, bro, just think about it like this, bro. Sole proprietors are you, me and everybody else in the world, a single person. A corporation is what rules the world. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to corporations, bro, corporations are the biggest companies. These are the people that, that uh, that's Amazon, that's Walmart. Those are corporations. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to shit like that, bro, a corporation is always going to be the bigger thing, bro. When two people that are sole proprietors, you both got your business and you get together, that makes a corporation. That was rude. That that will rule the world, bro. People ask me all the time, what does this tattoo on your face mean? It means that we all work together, the world to be a better place. Because truth be told, bro, everybody be working against each other. He say, talk about real estate. People ask me about real estate all the time. I used to go to school for real estate. But the reason why I never got my real estate license is because I come to realize like real estate is cool. But it's only cool if you're doing wholesale real estate. Now, mind you, if you're working for a brokerage, it ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. Real estate in general is good money, bro. But you going to be working like a slave working for that brokerage, making however much you make and breaking them down. And you just walk away with a small piece of profit. Wholesale real estate is where you make your real money at because you're selling houses for the whole bundle. Uh, what you said, y'all know about drop shipping. I be telling folks all the time, e-commerce is the wave, bro, because in, in today's society, you got to think about it. The internet allows you to sell water to a well. So with that being said, bro, like, let's, let's be real, bro. If I could get on the internet right now and I could go take uh, something I bought for $20 and sell it for $30, why wouldn't you? That's legal flipping. Y'all folks be so quick to flip a bag and flip some weed, but y'all won't get on the internet and sell a $20 product for $50. It's $30, bro. You sell you a couple of them products, you done made you a thousand. Sell you, sell you 10,000 of them, you done made you a hundred thousand. Vice versa, you know what I'm saying? But folks be small-minded. Brain be pee as a motherfucker, so. Hey, man. Hold on, let's see. Said, um... Stocks and cryptos. People ask me about stocks and cryptos all the time. Now, mind y'all, I got a mentorship for this. So if y'all is interested in learning anything about business, it is $250. But I also got my uh, my ebooks and all that stuff. I put in the link on the YouTube. But what I was going to say about stocks and cryptos is, bro, when it comes to cryptos, y'all got to understand, bro, the government is putting so much tax on this money, bro. People are switching over to un identified currency and untraceable currency just because they know, bro, like, come on now, bro, let's be real, bro. Businessman is real deal slimy, bro. And all of these people that's like out here for real, for real, like in the real world, like many folks don't be wanting to pay all them taxes and stuff like that. So when it come down to it, bro, they try to find a way to evade. The only way to evade is to invest in stocks, invest in cryptos and stuff like that. You go listen to a uh, Wall Street Trapper, he, he's the one that uh, got out of the, the dope game and invested in the stocks or something like that. I really can't tell y'all too much of his backstory, but what I can tell y'all is he said something that stuck with me. He said that when you go to jail, he said them folks will take every dollar that you have, but one thing they won't do is touch your portfolio. And what I mean by that is, bro, if you have money invested in crypts and stocks, bro, they expect for you to have money in your bank account. They're going to swipe that. You know what I'm saying? They don't expect the average African-American white man, whatever the case may be, to have money inside of stocks or cryptocurrency. So with that being said, you could go to jail right now with a million in crypto. It might go up or go down, but they not going to touch that like how they touch your bank account. 
That is the difference. So I be telling people all the time, bro, why should you invest in stocks? Why should you invest in cryptos? For one, it's like having a little extra bank account. I mean, the money does go up and down. It doesn't stay where it's at, but you could gain or lose. But another thing is, anything ever happen to you, bro, that money always goes untouched. I, I damn near promise you, bro. They're not expecting that one, bro. That's not what the average American, African-American does. Who, what's his name? Uh, Wall Street Trapper. Say, how about the car rental business? The car rental business is good as long as you're not out here setting yourself up for like liabilities and stuff like that. I be seeing folks 24 seven. I want to get into, or you could get a trust. People don't know if you put all of your stuff into a trust, if you get arrested right now, they can't take away from your trust because your trust is in your own personal identity. That's considered the identity of its own. You don't know that though. But back into the car rental game, the car rental game is cool. But what I tell y'all is it could be a liability because y'all be out here talking about, I want to get Hellcats and Scat Packs to rent them out. Who rents Hellcats and Scat Packs? Young niggas. They're going to dry your little car, mack that bitch into a wall. Now you're calling the insurance company trying to get everything situated. That's dumb, bro. A smart person, bro. Get you luxury vehicles, bro. Go get you BMWs, AMG Benzes, C-Classes, whatever the case may be. But that changes up your clientele. Realize your clientele can affect your money, bro. If you out here accommodating to nothing but young females and young dudes, you're going to have young people in your cars crashing and whacking them. And then when it comes back to hit you on the back end, the, the insurance companies look at you goofy because you're out here getting your cars crashed by other people, first of all. Second of all, like, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. The, the people that gave you the cars is looking at you crazy because I'm not going to lie. If you come and you crash one car, come back and get another car, and you're repeating this process, bro, it looks like you're a repeated offender when in reality it's your clientele. So I tell y'all folks all the time, or stealing them, but I tell y'all folks all the time, bro, when it comes to these car rentals and all that, bro, make sure you invest in like luxury cars, bro, so it's not as much of a liability. You want to have the older demographic in your cars. I want to have 25 plus older individuals getting in my car, not 21 and below and people trying to get their cousin to do they, uh, they, 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 uh, they Turo account for them and people trying to use their fake IDs. No, bro. That's why you crash and burn a business. A lot of people set themselves up because they be wanting to do what's trending, bro. Do what makes money, bro. It's trending don't matter because trending shit don't always make money. So anyways, um, he said clothing brands. People ask me about clothing brands all the time. They will say clothing brands are, uh, I hear this all the time. I, I hear people say clothing brands are, um, what do they be saying, bro? It's oversaturated. That's what I hear a lot. Clothing brands are oversaturated, but not realizing that clothing brand ain't no different from a rapper, bro. It's a thousand motherfuckers rapping the same way as a thousand people making clothes, but a thousand people don't make good clothes. You know what I'm saying? Do you know how many trash designs I could go grab out of my closet right now? And not to say that I'm going to put anybody on blast. I wouldn't do that. But everybody clothes ain't good. Everybody music ain't good. Everybody everything ain't good. So at the end of the day, who cares how many people are doing something if you could be the best at it? That's what I tell people, bro. You could jump into the game, drop a piece of clothing that might change the clothing game if that's what you're meant for. A lot of people doing stuff because they see other people doing it. That's why I say what's trending don't make money. It's a lot of people with clothing brands and they sell one shirt a year. Fuck. Who cares? You could be that clothing brand making a million dollars a year. And that's the difference between you and your competition. Do you think Gucci cares about other clothing brands? You think Louis Vuitton care about other clothing brands? They don't care how oversaturated it is. Because at the end of the day, if your brand has a name, if you make good quality, you, you stand firm on your quality, bro. People respect that shit, bro. I don't care. He said clothing brands are not oversaturated. That's cap. Go take you a scroll through TikTok. All of your favorite TikTokers are starting clothing brands. Everybody and their mama got a clothing brand. That shit is definitely oversaturated, but it don't matter. Fuck. Rapping is oversaturated. Everything is oversaturated. But you want to know it's crazy? All this shit like the NBA and the NFL. It's a million people that want to do it, but only about a hundred motherfuckers get in there. That's how it works. Come on now. You know how many people want to do YouTube right now? But it's, it's oversaturated because everybody want to be a vlogger. But you want to know why it doesn't matter? Everybody don't have personality. Everybody can't talk to a camera. And everybody ain't going to want to watch you. So at the end of the day, bro, who cares what's oversaturated? Who cares if it's a million people doing it? Because a million people ain't going to make it into that game. And that's not to say that it ain't meant for you. I learned a thousand times that you have to wait your turn. 
Sometimes it may not be meant for you right now, but it may be meant for you a year later, bro. Don't be mad about that shit, bro. Respect your time. Wait your turn. It's just like playing the game, bro. You jump into the game rushing, you lose, you mess up, it's game over. But if you come into the game, you be patient, you respect other people winning, you pay attention to their wins. Now, don't take a win for, for your partner or a win for somebody else on the other side and be like, damn, let me hate on him. Pay attention, bro. People spend a lot of time hating on people because of the position they in, the money they got, the things that they have, not realizing if you took that same amount of energy that you were putting into hating to take a second to focus, look at what that person is doing, not even copy him, but just pay attention, bro. It's a blueprint underneath everything. I promise you, bro. It's a person that joined my live every day. I hate you, broke ass nigga. And you want to know why I laugh? Because this broke ass nigga is doing exactly what the fuck I want to do and I'm having fun doing it. So at the end of the day, if you took the same amount of time you coming into my live hating on me and saying what you saying to really look at me for a second and understand that what I'm doing has a bigger purpose and you just pay attention to how I did it, you could do the same thing, bro. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. You go look at my first vlog in December on YouTube. I was staying in a regular ass apartment. To this day, it is nothing but December to now what? We two months, three months later. I am in a penthouse, bro, and that's not to shit on people, but that's to let people know, bro, if you paid attention to the blueprint instead of hating on me, you could do the same thing, because from the ground up, I always told people, anything I could do, the next man could do. I do everything and show everything on my platform, not to show people, oh, I'm trying to make people feel like they less than me, but to let people know, I was that young nigga sleeping on a leather couch in his grandma's house. That was going to high school every day, wearing New Balance, had five shirts and a couple pairs of jeans. But guess what? I didn't sit down and hate on nobody. I paid attention and I waited my turn. When people around me was going up, I didn't say, hey, man, look at him going up. Let me let me hate on him real quick. Let me let me drop some salt on little brother real quick. When I seen people around me going up, I said, damn, I said, what is he doing? Because he was in my position. If he could do it, I could do it too. Let it be motivation and inspiration. Don't ever let it be no hate, bro. Because it take a lot to hate on a person, bro. I don't think y'all understand how much it eats you up on the inside to wake up and be like, yeah, I hate what he's doing. I hate where he's going. Bro, get them folks they kudos and they pat on the back. Because at the end of the day, I always tell people we have the same 24 hours within the day. So for you to sit here and hate on me when you had the same amount of time in the day to do what I did, it makes no sense, bro. It don't make no sense. So I tell y'all folks all the time, bro, do what y'all want to do. Be your own person. Take your time. Be patient and wait your motherfucking turn, bro. Your turn going to come, bro. I promise you. Your turn might not be now. You might not be ready for it now. People be rushing for their turn, not even understanding, bro. The people that you have around right now, if they give you your turn, you're going to lose your turn because somebody around you might be plotting to take you down or may, maybe you don't know how to manage your money yet. So you get your turn right now, you're going to blow the bag. Sometimes the universe be trying to look out for you by not giving you your turn yet. You know what I'm saying? I used to be young and when I was 13, I used to be like, I want to be 18. I want to be 21. Now that I'm 21, I wish I was a little kid again sometimes because you got to sit back and look at how much you was rushing, not even understanding what type of what type of responsibilities you would take on or what or what type of how much your life would change just in a short amount of time, bro. When I was younger, I used to say I'm ready to graduate high school. I can't tell you how many times I look back. I ain't gonna say I want to be back in high school, but I look back and I'd be like, damn. I should have enjoyed high school a little bit more. I was rushing to get out of high school, not even rushing getting out of high school is nothing but bills. You got to go find females. You got to go find your friends. A lot of people going to drop off. And one thing about it is, bro, when you was in high school, everything was at grass reach. Networking was around the corner, bro. You become a grown man. If you a lame, you going to feel that shit because niggas not going to fuck with you when you graduate high school. You know what I'm saying? When, if you if you was a person that didn't know how to talk, it's going to hit because I'm telling you in high school, bro, people attract to you and shit like that. When you get into the real world, everybody on their own timing, bro. So it's a little bit different. I tell people all the time, bro, enjoy high school, bro. They tell me, I hate high school. I be skipping class, da, 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 da. Don't do that shit, bro. I'm telling you, bro, when you graduate high school, it's always that old man looking back, talking about what he could have did and what he should have did. Don't be that guy, bro, because one thing about life is it has no do-overs, and we don't know what happens when you finally leave it, mama. You don't know if you come back in another body. Don't nobody know what goes on for real because nobody's here to tell that story. So with that being said, bro, I'm telling you, bro, Take your time, bro. Don't rush nothing, bro. It ain't no reason to rush nothing. He said, I didn't get the network for real. And if you didn't get the network for real, twin, 
the real world is your oyster, bro. Because at the end of the day, twin, one thing I can tell you is I know you know how to talk. And I know I know how to talk. Two people that know how to talk can make a conversation. And that's how you create what's going on inside the real world, bro. So what I tell you is, bro, when it comes to networking, though, I tell y'all folks all the time, I'm glad you said something about networking, Jay. Networking is key. I tell people all the time, bro, you think you're going to get through this world just being talented, bro. I hate to tell you this, bro, but the world is set up to where nowadays it ain't about what you could do. It ain't about what you can offer. It's about who you know, bro. Sadly, bro, it is a person out here, bro, that ain't, he ain't. He ain't good at basketball at all, but his dad's in the NBA. Bruh's gonna go to college for basketball compared to a dude that should've had a full ride scholarship. That's how the world works. It is a rapper right now. Music is trash, but he know all the A&Rs. He know all the people behind the scenes. He's gonna be good, bro. Connections really do be everything, and it's sad to say that, bro, but I want y'all to know, bro, networking is key. Pro like, don't be scared to put your face out there. Don't be scared to say something to people. Don't be a fan. Don't be a D-rider. I tell people all the time, bro, they respect you more when you say less. Less is more. Don't be scared to talk to people, but also don't talk yourself out of certain situations. You got to know when to talk and when not to talk. There is a certain situation where you should be listening, and there is a certain situation where you should be talking. I'm going to explain something to y'all, bro. You have two eyes because you meant to observe more than you speak. You have two ears because you meant to listen more than you speak. Your mouth is as big as it is. Because one word out your mouth can either build or tear something down. So with that being said, use these, use these, and be patient with this. Because this right here could take you out of a lot of rooms and put you in a lot of rooms. I realize that sometimes you'll be in a room talking where you need to be listening. And you'll kill yourself, bro. And what I mean by that is I, I could name a situation where I was in a room with millionaires where I should have been just soaking up free game and just being a quiet motherfucker. But I'm the motherfucker out there talking about something. I'm Casper. Hi, nice to meet you. Bro, sometimes it's better to be that unknown person that just listens, bro. I'm telling you, bro, less is more. It's plenty. I'm telling you. But I tell y'all folks all the time, though, bro, it ain't about it ain't about what you know how to do nowadays, bro. It's about who you know for real, bro. And it's sad to say that, bro, but society is changing, bro. Everything around you is changing, bro. And with that being said, bro, it's going to get to a point to where you want to know how it don't matter what you know how to do. Technology is taking over everything. So at that point, bro, it's really going to be about who you know. Because, shit, if a robot can sing, cook, they don't need fry cooks. They don't need nobody to drop tenders. They ain't going to need y'all in these warehouses no more. It's really finna get nitty and gritty out here, bro. And if y'all folks don't know how to be a part of, what, of what's going up, you're going to be a part of what's going down. So I tell y'all folks all the time, bro, just make sure y'all on the up and up, bro. So uh, back to what somebody asked me about cryptocurrencies, though, bro. I tell y'all folks, like, bro. Invest into these coins, bro. Not no Doge coin or nothing that's going down, bro. Like, get into Ethereum, bro. Stuff like that, bro. You you want to get into like the coins that's becoming a part of the new market. So like, anything that people are using to buy something inside, uh, inside of like the crypto-based currency. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's a crypto market, bro, you need to be a part of whatever coin they're exchanging. So like, for example, bro, Bitcoin used to be the height of like. What, the early 2000s until now? Bitcoin is fluctuating up and down, though. If you could have got into Bitcoin like a couple months ago when it was at 16000 you probably would have made you double your money right now. But people didn't know that. But what I tell you is Ethereum, Ethereum is going to become the next Bitcoin. Watch what I tell y'all, bro. Y'all folks go invest into Ethereum. I ain't telling you put all your money into it. Don't be sad if you lose all your money. But just put a small amount of money into Ethereum and watch what I tell you, bro. Ethereum is on the come up, bro. They using it to buy all these NFTs and all these different types of uh, virtual creations and stuff like that. It's getting put into the metaverse and stuff like that. So with that being said, bro, I'm telling you, that's going to take off. Either listen to me or don't. I never tell y'all what to do with y'all money. I just give y'all advice because that's y'all asked for. He said, what app do I use? I tell people all the time, when it comes to cryptocurrencies, use a uh, Coinbase. And the reason why I say use Coinbase is for one, Coinbase teaches you about cryptocurrency and they pay you to learn about it. And they also let you invest in any cryptocurrency you could think of, as well as giving you free stocks and cryptos. But when it comes to like regular stocks, bro, TD Ameritrade and stuff like that is probably like better for regular stocks. They say XRP is up next. It's definitely up next. I forgot about XRP. Uh, what made you the most money? If you want to be honest, bro, I done made a lot of investments into a lot of different stuff. I tried landscaping. That shit did not work for me. I tried a whole bunch of different stuff. 
the best investment I ever made was investing into myself. And the reason why I say that is, bro, you're your biggest brand, bro. When when people ask me what's what, what was the most money I ever made, forget the most money I ever made. I I look at life for satisfaction because money doesn't always bring you satisfaction. I've made a fifty very quickly and it didn't really too much satisfy me versus me working very hard to make a twenty or a thirty off my name and it just gives you a little bit more satisfaction, bro. I don't know what it is, bro, but it's just a little, it's a little different, bro. When I get a paycheck to come to Who Cash for LLC, direct deposit, wire, whatever the case may be, it hits way more crazy than them investments I made into somebody else's stock or something like that. Cause it makes me feel like my net worth going up, bro. Like, you feel me? Like, you feel like one of the people on the Forbes list when that money get to coming in for real, for real. So. I don't know, bro. I tell people all the time, bro, you going to be your biggest investment, bro, because at the end of the day, bro, you investing in all these other people, but who going to invest in you but you? You going to be your biggest investment. Thoughts on the flower business? Uh, I tell people all the time about the flower business, too, bro. Man, they got, they got flower stocks. They got all types of stuff when it comes to this marijuana shit. So what I tell people all the time about marijuana is I would tell y'all folks, like, if y'all folks want to invest into it, get into the legitimate market, bro. Go, go, go do your research. You feel me? Uh, you, you go to school for botany if that's what you want to do. Learn about these plants and stuff and get into it for real, bro. Because what I can tell y'all is it's a billion dollar industry and it's forever growing, bro. At the end of the day, the more legal states it hits, the more money that's going to get taken away from the trappers and put into the government's pocket. So with that being said, if you're a trapper, you're not your job's not going to be here too much longer because one thing i could tell you is bro it's cool to go around the corner and get it from zabamba food or go to the gas station but you want to know why people is getting tired of that because they could just go in a dispensary around the corner and know that it's exactly what they're paying for and it's the exact name that they want the exact strain that they want and it's going to do what they want it to do now mind y'all i'm gonna tell y'all bro it's going to take a long time before that happens, but it's a it's a ever evolving situation to where right now, bro, I'm telling y'all, bro, New York is legal there, bro. Even the cops could do it, bro. I'm telling you, it's recreational, bro. Cali, it's already done, bro. Georgia is getting put into play next, bro. Where y'all money going to come from? Get into get into the legal aspect of things, bro. People be so stuck up on trying to be illegitimate, not even understanding, bro. They're making it to where at, at some point in time, bro, y'all ain't gonna matter no more. So either you gonna transition or you gonna be like everybody else that's struggling, bro. I'm telling y'all folks, bro, get on the up and up. Don't be the one that's on the down just thinking that everything you're doing right now is gonna be here for forever. A lot of stuff that you're doing right now is not gonna matter later. A lot of stuff that you're involving yourself in right now will not be relevant later, bro. So with that being said, make your little time that you got right now count and invest, bro. Invest your money, bro. Oh, bro, there ain't nothing wrong with investing. I don't understand why people wanna, wanna people be talking about hustle. You wanna know what's so dumb about hustle? I love the hustle because hustle got me to where I'm at. But what I can explain to you about hustling is hustling is working. That's working. The whole point of hustling is so you can stop working. So with that being said, why wouldn't you invest your money, bro? Who don't want to make money while they sleep? Who don't want to wake up to a bag in their bank account without them having to be up to do it? People be talking about being a trapper. I'm a hustler. Yeah, bro, but I know you get tired of answering them phone calls for the three fives and answering the phone calls for the zips. You ain't always getting a P play. And then to the people that do all the other little stuff, like, bro, I know you getting tired of having to be up to make money. So with that being said, invest your money so you can make money while you're sleeping. You're going to be that person that makes money and retires when they're 60 because you set yourself up to hustle. Work smarter, not harder, bro. Ain't nothing wrong with hustling, bro. Hustle to get to where you want to be. But once you get to where you want to be, invest your money so you can stay where you at and keep going without having to be up 24-7 to see your dreams play out, bro. I love being able to wake up with a random deposit in my account knowing that I didn't have to do anything to earn it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's that real P. I'm not talking about your job when you wake up on Friday and your paycheck just hit from you working all week. I'm talking about some. I didn't move a finger, I ain't talk to nobody, I ain't have to listen to nobody, and I just woke up and blink, that shit hit different. People be asking me why you be so uh, hard hard on, on your social media and shit, and why you be on live so much, because I'm trying to build a face for myself. One thing about me is, 
I'm perfecting my craft as far as talking to people, but I'm also building my brand. I want y'all folks to understand, bro, in order to build a brand, say you the person out here trying to start a clothing line and you never wear your clothes. How the fuck they gonna know who the fuck? Uh, okay, yeah, bro. Another person could, could wear your clothes. He'll wear your clothes one time. He, he don't buy one outfit from you. That's a little bit of free promo. You your biggest investment and biggest promoter. So with that being said, say you wearing that shit every day. You wearing your clothes every day. Putting it in people's faces, bro. It, it just hit different, bro. I tell people that shit all the time, though. That man in here talking about, man, get your ass home, man. Y'all folks be so junky out, man. You ain't got no plays. You got to come my line, ask for a play. He said, not going to lie, these are the best lives you be saying what everybody's scared to say. But that'd be the thing about the internet, bro. The internet is a facade, bro. I tell people all the time, you got a lot of people on the internet that's going to tell you what you want to hear. And a lot of people are just going to sit on here and try to shit on y'all. But one thing about me is, bro, I be trying to use my platform as a sense of, like, teaching people stuff, motivating people, or being some type of inspiration. Because it's enough people getting on the internet, oh, you ain't got no money, you ain't having no emotion, you ain't make 10K today. Man, it was a point in time when that nigga wasn't making 10K a day, but he ain't gonna sit there and tell you that. He gonna try to shit on y'all and act like y'all doing, y'all not doing enough. You know what I'm saying? And that's weird, bro. I never understood that part of the internet. I never understood how people that came from the bottom will get to the top and never act like they was at the bottom. They'll sit on live and be talking about, yeah, y'all nigga, bro, yeah, man, you need to go get you some money today, man, 100K. Man, at one point in time, you was the same person watching your live. So that's weird that you would try to shit on people this in a position that you used to be in. So I look at my position all the time and be like, yeah, I understand what type of platform I have. And instead of using it to be on here 24 seven, just being that guy, let me try to give back in some shape way or form. Cause at the end of the day, bro, when I give y'all this free game and I sit on here on live for 50 minutes, I'm not losing nothing, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's enough money being printed every day for everybody to do what they want to do, make their money in their own way, and it's not going to hurt what I got going on. So for me to sit on here and give you a free game, what am I really losing? He said something about forex trading. I'm going to explain something to y'all about forex trading. I'm not a forex trader, but what I could tell y'all is, bro, I have my own personal opinions on forex just for the simple fact that forex is kind of a weird thing. So if you're actually getting into the foreign exchange market, and people are actually teach you about Forex, that's cool. You'll make good money. But don't be the person that gets caught up inside the pyramid scheme side of Forex because there is a pyramid scheme side of Forex. And that side of Forex is people just getting you to buy mentorships and get other people to sign up, bro. It is a lot of people in Forex right now and they don't make no money off the foreign exchange market. They just making money off of signups and getting other people to sign up and you getting other people to sign up and getting money off of referral codes. So with that being said, Make sure that when you like really get into like really trying to do Forex and stuff like that, you got a person that's really teaching you the game, showing you the charts and showing you how to really use the foreign exchange market, bro. Because it's a lot of people right now. Man, these folks got 100,000 members under them and they making what million dollars a year, millions in months and stuff like that. But it ain't from the foreign exchange market. It is from y'all's pockets and y'all getting other people to join. So don't be that person getting caught up in that side of the foreign exchange market, bro. It's a lot of pyramid Ponzi schemes and all that little stuff within the world. Don't be don't be that guy getting caught up in there. He say Airbnb and rentals. I tell people all the time about like Airbnb and the rentals and stuff like that, bro. Like uh, I already explained rentals early in the video, but when it comes to like Airbnbs and stuff like that, bro, it's is you don't have to own these Airbnbs, bro. As long as you speak into these leasing offices, these leasing manager, tenant managers, and getting a green light, creating some type of agreement where they're allowing you to do the Airbnb. You do not have to own the Airbnb, bro. Now, if you do own the Airbnb, that's all the more merrier because at the end of the day, it ain't nobody to call your phone talking about, oh, somebody's hitting a, a girl on your balcony or they're they're throwing bottles and trashing the crib and had a whole house like weed. You know what I'm saying? But what I tell y'all folks is, like I said, bro, just make sure y'all like, bro, it's the same thing with the cars, bro. Don't let that shit become a liability, bro. Don't have the party Airbnb and you hungry for money. So every person that comes and tries to book it, you letting them in, bro, because it's going to become a situation where, yeah, you was hungry for money and now you owe money because you was letting everybody come in because you wanted that little 250 at night. And now you done had some little kid come in here. He done stepped across your couch. I almost burnt the house down and now you're in debt from trying to chase the bag. I tell people, don't chase money, let money, it ain't gonna come to you, but let money chase you. Don't chase money, bro. I'm telling you, he'll get to a point. 
Um, what else I was gonna say, man? He said, let me pop out and rent Airbnb. I gotta finish it. My crib ain't even fully furnished yet. I still gotta put my bar stools in here and I still gotta put, uh, I got like rugs and stuff I need to put in the crib. Paintings need to get put up and stuff like that. My lighting needs to get finished in here with my uh, LED lights and stuff. But when everything is done, it will be on Airbnb. I will post the list, like the listing on my uh, Instagram so y'all folks can list it. He say, um, he say the best thing to get into for jits. Now, now the thing about when folks say like the best thing to get into for jits, I don't think y'all understand, bro. You know, age don't matter when it comes to making money for real, bro. You could do the same thing a grown man is doing, bro. It's about your mental capacity, bro. Like how much are you willing to learn? How smart are you? How good are you at picking up information? Because there is a 13 year old out there right now doing stocks. Like anybody could do anything they want to do. It's just about how willing you are to put yourself in a position to get to where you want to be. Vending machines, that's easy for young nigga. Like you can start being a barber early on. You could sell candy, sell chips. You could be a shoe restorer. It's a thousand different types of things to get into. But I tell people all the time, just as easy as it is for me to give you some type of advice on what you should do or what you could do, I, I, I always tell y'all to do what y'all want to do. Because I could tell you to go be a shoe restorer right now. You might not like restoring shoes. You'll be miserable and you'll make money, but who wants to be miserable doing something? So I tell y'all for all the time, bro, do what you want to do, bro. Don't do what I tell y'all to do. Do what y'all want to do. So like, if you want to make clothes, make clothes. You, He said, I got a lot of hustles right now. I mean, find your best hustle the one that you enjoy the most and make it make money for you, bro. But don't let it be no illeg illegitimate hustle, bro. Don't invest your time into shit that ends you up in jail, bro. Um, It's a lot of ways to make money, though, bro. I tell people all the time, bro, just find what you like and what you got a passion for. You might be meant to be a painter, piano player, or you might be good at cleaning houses or something, bro. Everybody is skilled in their own shape, wear, form, bro. You never know. So it, with that being said, bro, like, like I said, bro, do what you want to do. Don't do what I tell you to do. Do what you do what you want to do. He say, uh, what are the best banks to get in your opinion? I mean, I, bro, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. These like, uh, if you could get in under like Navy Federal and stuff like that, those are some of the best banks to have. Just because, bro. I miss with Delta too. I had a Delta like they interest rates and they return on your savings accounts and stuff like that. Like interest rates low. They give you good. They give you money back on your savings account if you have a certain amount of money in your savings account. So like credit unions really be the way to go as far as I'm concerned. I mean, y'all folks have to build credit and stuff like that to go get y'all Amex cards and all that little good stuff. But bro, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Whatever you get your hands into, bro, if you could get a bank account, get one. These folks be out here banking with Chime and Cash Out, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Shit, if you get a bank account, get one. Everyone think a nine to five not a thing no more. If you provide for you and yours, a nine to five ain't nothing wrong with it. No, bro. See what's corny is, bro. It's corny that the person would sit on his grandma couch serving a three five a day and he not helping pay the bills, but he won't go get a job. What's corny is a person to say he's a swiper and he makes no plays and he running off on ten dollars for McDonald's meals and little goofy stuff. That's corny, bro. It ain't nothing corny about being able to provide for yourself, buy what you want to buy, provide for your family, and do for your peoples, bro. It's corny to think that you're something you're not, bro. I will see a thousand people a day get on here posting a zip. They post a zip every week. Like they 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 be on Instagram posting a zip and they be like, yeah, man, come shout with me. You've been trapping out the zip for like for a year now, bro. You ain't never moved up to a P. That's not your lane, bro. Life is about progression. If you've been in the same place for that long, bro, that's not your lane, bro. It's a person out here who refused to get a job, call himself a swiper because he saved up enough money to buy one pair of Balenciagas. Bro, you don't even make enough plays throughout the year to live in your own crib, buy your own car, or even be your own man. If you got kicked out your mama crib right now, you would be at rock bottom. So, bro, y'all folks need to stop calling yourself all this stuff that y'all not and involving yourself with all this stuff that you're not good at, bro. It ain't nothing wrong with having a job. It ain't nothing wrong with being an upstanding citizen. I don't know who told people it's corny to make money and be able to live and sleep at night without knowing that you might wake up and go to jail the next morning. Everybody think it's so player to, to just be this 
this this grimy ass like bro ain't nothing play about that shit because at the end of the day when y'all go to jail bro y'all be showing y'all true colors bro y'all crying them courtrooms y'all cry to y'all mamas y'all cry to them lawyers and then when you get behind the wall y'all try to act hard and y'all get beat up and all types of stuff bro so don't be putting yourself in these crazy positions because you want to be so stuck on being tough i always tell people 24 7 i'm not Pussy, but I ain't no tough nigga, bro. I'm a smart nigga. Cause one thing about me is if it's a position where my life is in jeopardy, I'm cool on it, bro. I got a long life to live for and I got other people to provide for other than just me. So I would never play myself out of my position trying to be a tough nigga. Tough niggas die, bro. Tough niggas die, bro. Smart niggas live long, bro. Be a smart nigga, not a tough nigga. You know what I'm saying? Don't be a gangster. You could be a street nigga without being a gangster. You know what I'm saying? It's a difference, bro. It's levels to that shit, bro. People be so hardball and struck on being tough, acting like you could fight a bullet, bro. These folks don't want to hit with you no more, bro. And even the folks that do want to hit, they want to hit, and as soon as they lose a fight, they're ready to pick up a steal. So with that being said, be a smart nigga, bro. Being a smart nigga is so much player to me, bro, because at the end of the day, smart niggas last longer out here, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. All these street niggas, they, they good, you feel me? They might make it a little bit longer than the average nigga. A gangster, gangsters dying every day, bro. Oh, you say oh, you say you want to be a tough nigga? Tough niggas die every day, bro. So, just be a smart nigga, bro. Keep your head on the swivel. I tell y'all all the time. Watch your surroundings. Watch the people you keeping around you, too. Because, shit, I tell y'all folks this all the time, too, bro. A lot of people will build you up to take you down. You don't know who around you that's calling you brother and stuff like that, acting like he with you right now. And in truth, truth be told, and in real reality, he's behind you hating on you for real. A lot of these people will act like they love you. And when they go in their rooms and close that door, they be sick to their stomach, waiting on you to hit rock bottom. So, hey, boy, watch that shit, bro. And... Watch the small things people say too, bro. I tell y'all all the time, two ears, two eyes, so you can listen and observe more than you speak. So with that being said, if you got a person around you, he say something slick like, oh, I hate you, or I can't wait for this to happen to you, this, that, and the third. Man, watch that man, bro, or just go ahead and cut him out the equation, because I'm telling you, when people say little weird stuff, hey, boy, people say stuff, they don't say stuff for no reason, bro. And I used to, I, I say the same thing with females. This is a good ass example of how you know people don't say nothing for no reason. You ain't never had no female get mad at you and during a misty eye having an argument, she'll say a whole bunch of stuff about you that you never heard her say before. It's Cause that's how she really be feeling underneath the scene. She just don't be having a reason to say it. And when she finally get that reason, she gonna blow up on you. So I tell y'all folks all the time, watch what people say and watch how they carry themselves around you, bro. Everything matters. Energy matters. The way people talk matters. The things people say matter. You feel me? Hey, boy, somebody ain't gonna say nothing about me, and I can tell y'all that. I can tell y'all that one. Um, based on percentage, how do you save and invest, bro? I ain't gonna lie to you. I only spend like five percent of what I make, bro. So if you make a hundred k, you need to be spending like five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, bro. Y'all folks will be out here crashing and burning. Y'all will be out here spending your whole bankroll and doing all this to, to uh, hey, look, bro, financial advisor, money management, bro, you don't spend 50% of what you make. All that, I made 500, spend 250, put 250 up. The fuck type sense do that make? Like, think about if you were a regular person working a job and you made, say you make, uh, I don't know, say you made $1,000 that two weeks you was working at your job. You finna spend 500 in a week when it took you two weeks to make 1000 That's goofy. So I tell you for all the time, bro, use your money. Like, even if you don't have a job, use your money like you have a job. That's why I respect that I, that I worked and I had all of them little bull bull spit jobs I had because it gave me a respect for money. It showed me how to finance because regardless of how much money I get, millions, billions, I'm always going to work in my mind like I'm that kid that worked at Zaxby's. I'm always going to work in my mind like I'm that dude working at the barbecue place. You feel me? I'm, I, I ain't never going to let money just let me be like, yeah, I got money. I did that before, bro. You'll blow through it. You won't have it long. It won't be there long. God damn, kid. You be so starstruck on a follow back, twin. Like, it don't. Them follow, why, why does a follow back matter so much, nigga? Gonna follow your ass. You done with it. You If you get this page deleted, I ain't following back. No more of your pages, twin. You get all of your pages deleted. Anyways. 
Use your money like you got a job. That's what you supposed to do. You supposed to use your money like you got a job. Don't ever be out here thinking you you too good and now you could just start blowing your money and doing all that crazy stuff. The same way money come to you, money can leave you. The same way you gain stuff, you could lose stuff. So with that being said, come on now. Don't be the guy out here just just willy-nilly with his money because he got it. Because I'm telling you, bro, ask these basketball players, these football players, and all of these different people, bro. They tell you all the time, bro, you out here living like you rich, you ain't going to be rich for long, bro. The people who got the most money, man, them folks is wearing white collar t-shirts and wearing Crocs and blue jeans. Them folks ain't out here wearing a bunch of designer and the ones that's wearing a bunch of designer by the time they hit 60, they be talking about what they should have did with their money when they was in their 20s. Don't be that guy, bro. I, I would hate to be the guy that grow up thinking about what I could have did or what I should have did. Do it. Now. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. 50 minutes of free game on uh, YouTube. Thank y'all for watching, though, man. Y'all folks, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next video.